today we're going to be talking about ChatGPT and how to integrate it with um, FileMaker. So if you haven't heard, ChatGPT is this online tool that you can use to ask this AI language model kind of any question you want and see the human-like responses that it gives to you. So we'll go and play with this for a little bit and we'll ask it, say, what is Dolly Parton's age? And then it gives information based off the knowledge that it's had when it's kind of done its machine learning. And then the nice thing about this is it understands context. So you can kind of ask a follow-up follow question, what about her husband, without giving you know, the full context. And it knows that who she's been married to and to, to give his age as well and things like that. So it's pretty cool. Here to the left, you can see it keeps track of your history. Um, if you want to clear something out that you kind of previously done, um, start a new chat. Um, but to do this, you need to go to openai.com and create a free account. Um, and when you get this free account, you also get access to some of the other APIs for things that they do. And you get about $18 in um, free tokens to use because each message and response that you send to and from chat GPT cost tokens. I mean, it's minimal. It's like points like two thousandths of a cent per token. As you can see here, I've used 16 cent out of the 18 free dollars they give me just in the time that we've been kind of just playing around here. So we're going to look at it. If you've seen the demo file, we're going to um, ask chat GPT, how do I bake a cake? And it's going to give us a response and we're going to try to connect FileMaker so that we can also get the same response through the uh, the software itself. So here what you'll need to do when you come into the, the file that we have, you'll provide it a max number of tokens, a temperature, an API key that will be there. And then here in the prompt you can ask it the same thing. Sorry about that. How do I bake a cake? And then you hit send. And you'll get... Um, it'll start sending, and you'll only get a piece of this message back. As you can see, it kind of cuts off here after the first instruction. Um, that's because the max token here was set to 80. Now, if you were to bump that up to 800 and maybe even bump up the temperature here, get a little more creative with the answer, we'll resend that same response. How do I bake a cake? And you should be able to not only get the whole message, but maybe even get a little bit more detail because um, that's how the temperature controls that creativity and fluctuation of messages that you'll get. And as you can see, we get the, the the full response here there. So let's check this under the hood. When the file starts, it kind of just sets some things to the default, but this is really what you're what you're looking for. Um, the API token that you get, you'll come here to use the API keys and just create a new key. It's pretty simple. You store that into your file. Um, it's going to pull from the all these table. Oh, sorry, all these fields that you see here on this table. The user prompt, um, the the temperature, the tokens, and then these are the big things that you'll need here. On this JSON that you send, these top two are required. Um, the model, and there's several different models. Um, I believe the one prior to this uh, was Daisy. And then you'll need to send the user prompt in an, ar in an array. But if you use JSON array, it doesn't like that as much as if you use JSON object. The temperature and the max tokens are optional. Um, but again, your response may be cut off depending on how that's sent. You'll use this uh, get URL of, of openai.com v1 chat completions. There is a, another endpoint here that is just just v1 completions um, but that's that's for some of the other models to use the chat GPT one you'll need to use chat slash completions and then we'll throw this in here you will attach that JSON here to the end like that again you send in the API key the application JSON to the post and then the final thing we do here is just some formatting because the response you get back uh, from the um, from the from the API gives you not, not only the message, um, but it also tells you that the who who what what type of user the message was sent back from, why did the 
Why did the response stop generating? Was it because you ran out of tokens? Was it done? Just some other things. So we use this here just to kind of filter out just um, the, the response itself. And then this last thing, there's some return characters in the response. So if you really want it formatted like this, you're going to want to substitute those return characters for pill crows. Um, but other than that, it's real simple. You can send whatever whatever you want into um, into the into the text prompt here, and then hopefully you'll have some happy chatting. If you're interested in developing a FileMaker solution or learning how to integrate your FileMaker solution with one that you already have, feel free to contact us at DB Services, and we'll be happy to help you. Thanks.